Hey everybody, interesting question came up this week on the Enterprise DNA forum that I wanted to spend some time on. And it was from a user named Bill K. And he basically just wanted to build a visual matrix visual that looked like an Excel pivot table with a grand total but not subtotals. And so the, the larger question is kind of how to control subtotals and grand totals in your in your matrix visual. And I'm going to provide you with two solutions to this problem. One very simple one and one much more complex and talk about when you might use each each approach. So what I did on this one was um, I started off with the Enterprise DNA Practice Data Set External Tool and I'll give you the, the link to this in the in the comments section below. It's a tool that we developed for exactly this purpose to create practice data sets. You just click on this, this icon right here in the external tools menu, and it creates a three-year data set with a full data model up to today's date. And it's just, it's just a basic sales, um, channels, customers, products, regions, um, star schema data model, but it can be used to develop a lot of um, good testing models and in this case what I did was um, I went in and just put together a matrix visual very similar to what he he wanted in the um, in the forum question so what I used was just a very very simple total sales measure just sum of line sales within the sales table and kept that to two products um, three different channels and then um, set that to uh, four quarters within the year 2020 just to keep it a relatively small table but within the requirements that he had in his his question so it's complex enough to to test everything out and what he wanted to do was basically take out keep the the total the grand total down here but then take out these these subtotals for the products. And what I'm, what I'm showing you here is basically I took four different copies of this table. And using the technique I'm going to show you in a minute, what you can do is you can keep the, the row totals and eliminate everything else. You can keep the, the column totals and eliminate everything else. Uh, you can just keep the subtotals and you can actually vary that by individual subtotal. Or you can take out all the subtotals and all the grand totals and just be left with the the base rows so you've got really full flexibility and control here and I'll show you how this is done um, if we go to the main table and then we go to the format role your subtotals um, there's an option if we scroll down that is per row level and we turn that on and then also there's one per column level, and we make sure that's turned on as well. And then what we can do here is we can turn on product name, and that that gives us, if you, if you watch here as we flip back and forth, that turns off the, um, the grand totals at the bottom. Um, channel name here turns off the subtotals, and then per column level, uh, quarter and year turns off the the row totals. Um, so just by toggling the combinations of those, you can get to any any combination of visible or invisible subtotals and totals that you want. You just turn those on and toggle the uh, the options. Um, so that's that's the really simple, easy way to do it. Um, and then the, the more difficult way is through DAX. And you may be wondering, if we've got this really simple way to do this, why should we even bother with a more difficult way? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you, but basically what it gets to is the issue that comes up a lot in terms of incorrect totals. And so in, in this case, what I've done is I've stripped down the, the example from the previous page to just quarter one and quarter two. But otherwise, it's the same the same matrix visual. And so what we've got here is just the the simple total sales measure and that all that all works fine. Totals are correct. 
But then what happens if we use a more complex um, sales measure here? And what I've done is I've created something called total sales switch. And this is dependent on the value of our sales channel. So wholesalers get total sales times a 1.15 um, cost elevator. Distributors get it at the total sales cost. And for export, um, it's a 30% increase. So sales tariffs or whatever. But just I just kind of made up some numbers to, to make a point here in that if we if we have a more complex total sales calculation, if we look here, these numbers in the totals can't possibly be right. Because if we look here with the, the prior numbers, which are correct, um, they're the same. And yet it can't be true because when we look, for example, at wholesale um, or even export, um, export is 30% higher than in the in the previous case. And yet the the totals here are showing up the same. So that that just can't be can't be correct. And so the question is then how do you how do you correct that? And if you've been around the Enterprise DNA forum for a while, you know that um, one of our experts, Greg Phillips, has put together an incredible series of patterns that you can tap into for common problems. And probably the most frequently used one is the fix incorrect totals. And he goes through a whole series of of examples of very common examples for tables, for matrices, um, for cards, etc., on how to fix incorrect totals. And the the basic pattern here is that if we go back to our our example here, is that in the DAX you need to be able to distinguish between a data row and a total or a subtotal row, and you need to be able to do that because the data rows will often calculate correctly and it's the the grand total or the subtotal rows we will need to implement some more complex logic you typically using virtual tables in order to to get a correct total and i've done a number of videos on this and greg covers it extensively in the in the pattern section but the way to do this within dax is there's there's a whole series of functions and I've, I've got them laid out here has one filter has one value is filtered is cross filtered and is in scope um, and those are all used to determine among other things whether you're in a data row or a subtotal or total row and if you look here right now they all kind of look the same with the exception here of has one value where it's showing the the product one subtotal and that's just because of an artifact in the data that I developed for this one, where product one only has a distributor channel. Um, it doesn't have an export or wholesale channel in the sales table. If it did, it would show like all the other ones where they all look exactly the same. They're, where they're not showing the grand total and they're not showing the subtotals. But look what happens if we impose a slicer on this and let's Let's pick distributor and wholesale. And what you'll see is all of a sudden these change a lot. And now there's a big difference between, for example, has one filter here, um, doesn't show the product one subtotal, has one value does. And as I say, that's an artifact of the data. But then if we look here in is filtered, this now shows the, the grand total, the um, the row totals and the subtotals, as does is cross filtered, is in scope. On the other hand, um, provides a result that's very similar to has one filter. So you can see that the imposition of that additional slicer changes the the nature of what you what you get here, and. There's not a there's not a hard and fast answer of what you should use to fix a given total. It's going to depend on your data model. It's going to depend on your DAX. But the important thing here is to see that the different functions produce different results in terms of blanking out the the total versus the the subtotals and the grand total. 
So the important thing here is that in this measure, our column totals are wrong and our grand total is wrong. So we're going to want to pick a function that blanks out the, the column totals and the grand totals and lets us apply some additional logic to get those correct. So in this case, it could be has one filter, could be has one value, could be as in scope. That these two, as you'll see, don't differentiate between the, the grand total and the base rows in the, in the proper way. So the specifics of that are beyond the scope of this video. It's something I'll cover in a future video. But just note that there are also oftentimes performance distinctions that you'll find between these these different functions and that will also speak to which one you choose in your um, your ultimate measure. So that's basically all I wanted to cover today. Hopefully that gives you some good useful tools for your toolbox. Um, as always, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.